Hi guys, it's Scott's Comic Brad Sign. Here's the question of the week. Have you ever been called a Nazi? Seem like we hear that all the time. Let me ask you a question. If that was called to you, did they prove their case? Do you think in America that it's too easy to call people a name and not have to justify it? Comment below. I'll give you the answers you need on the inside, but you get the ball rolling. You know, guys, over the last few years, it seems the go-to insult for anyone disagreeing with leftist Marxist philosophy is you are a Nazi. Nazi is an easy word to say. Nazi. Nazi, Nazi. Easy. Only has four letters, and none of them are complicated. But the word Nazi carries a lot of weight, a lot of baggage, and a lot of reminding us just how easily and quickly your average human being can be trained to go from being a nine-to-five accountant to a masochistic, evil human rights violator. But that's what happened. Since the word is used so frivolously to mean those who you despise, though, shouldn't we at least be able to define what a Nazi actually is? I mean, calling someone a Nazi doesn't magically make them one unless you believe that your subjective opinion is so powerful that it creates reality as opposed to observing it. Keep in mind that language is one of the many human traits that separates us from everything else that exists in the universe. Language is essentially a code created and operated by a living, cognizant being that wants to be able to communicate information to another human. What makes it so supernatural is it can literally educate and inform a fellow human being with information they may not have had only moments before. By air forced from our lungs, which then in turn produces vibrations from our vocal cords that are designed to formulate and mold the specific sounds that travel through the air to the eardrum of our companion. And those sounds that the other humans hears are instantaneously translated from what would be meaningless noise to an animal and is instead to the unique human interpreted as to what information is being passed along in order to find a cohesive understanding of an idea that suddenly both possess. But in the act of communicating, there also are some other dynamics taking place. Trust happens to be one of them. The idea of communicating is so important that to lie can literally cause catastrophic results. Keep in mind that if you lie, you're not communicating. Communication is the technique of sharing the truth with another cognizant being. A lie, on the other hand, is the counterfeit truth. It is withholding the other person's access to reality. Counterfeit da Vinci painting, if believed to be real, will sell to lovers of art for half a billion dollars. To pay half a billion dollars for a painting is pretty much imperative to the buyer that they are buying an authentic rendition. We want to purchase and own the completed artistic expression of an image that was rendered by the artist who has been given elite status amongst the lovers of art as a genius. Counterfeit, on the other hand, is a copy of the original but holds no value. Now why? If I can paint a, an exact replica of the Mona Lisa, why can't it be equally honored? Because the power and value comes from the original. The original came from a mind that seemed to be able to accomplish more creatively in regards to seeing what no one else of their era could see to break new ground and stimulate new avenues of what the boundaries of art are capable of. There have been billions of pianists in the world, but only one Mozart. Some rare humans come around once in an epoch and remind the rest of us just how unimaginative we actually are. Lies are a polluting of the pristine rivers of reality. They don't hold truth as sacred and abuse it, for their own ends. If you have to lie about something, it is because you have either done something nefarious and don't want to be held accountable, or you're trying to get something from someone that you couldn't get from them utilizing the truth, meaning what you want shouldn't be yours in the first place. So, back to Nazis and the glib way Americans have been painted with that brush by leftists. The word Nazi is an acronym for National Socialist German Workers' Party. 
the party's socialist orientation was basically a demagogic gambit designed to attract support from the working class. So let's look up the definition of demagogue in Merriam-Webster, and let's face it, Merriam's dictionary sums up the superiority of Americans better than any other dictionary ever conceived. She defines it this way. Demagogue, a political leader that seeks support by appealing to the desires and prejudices of ordinary people rather than by using rational argument. In order for Nazis to begin to implement their evil, they organize strong-arm groups to protect their rallies and meetings. I guess think of it as if Antifa wanted their grievances known, but actually had someone articulate and literate as their spokesman. But Germans were fairly normal people, so what exactly happened to begin to sway an otherwise civil human to join something as radical as a Nazi party? Well, it was their concern for their own safety and comfort that caused them to begin to compromise their character. It was the effects of the Great Depression in Germany that brought the Nazi party to its first real nationwide importance. The rapid rise in unemployment in 29 to 30 provided millions of jobless and dissatisfied voters whom the Nazi parties exploited to its advantage. After Hitler took power, Nazi party membership became mandatory for all higher civil servants and bureaucrats, and the gulleteers, or local party leaders, then became powerful figures in the state governments. Hitler crushed the Nazi party's left, or socialist-oriented wing in 1934, executing Ernest Röhm and other rebellious SA leaders on what would become known as the Night of the Long Knives thereafter. Hitler's word was the supreme and undisputed command in the party. The party came to control virtually all political, social, and cultural activities in Germany. Nazism advocated totalitarian government, territorial expansion, anti-Semitism, and Aryan supremacy, all these leading directly to World War II and the Holocaust. So let's compare actual definition and see who might be a bit guilty. A totalitarian, huh? Is there a group in the U.S. that wants government to control all industry, commerce, trade, property, and ability to communicate? Oh, the left are actually advocating and doing that as we speak. Territorial expansion, as in conquering other countries, or does that include expanding control over other states' rights and American lives, liberty, and autonomy, especially in regards to free speech? Hmm. Leftists are all over that. Anti-Semitism. Well, we have a couple Democrat senators who have spoken quite vocally against Jewish people and Israel in particular. Aryan supremacy, that I, I haven't seen from either side. The fact is, whenever you see a group of normally 12 or less white guys marching through the streets for white supremacy, they are pretty much ignored as ignorant and foolish, because they are. I mean, they certainly get no support from mainstream America or anyone in politics, though they do make for great clickbait. If someone wants to pretend that White supremacy is a huge issue. <laughs> so we've seen nothing motivates more donations to a candidate than running on conspiracy theories and hoaxed hate crimes. So, my point is pretty clear. Whenever you hear an extreme accusation hurled by one group towards another group, simply ask yourself, do the accusers hate the other group? Are they exhibiting traits of their accusations through their own behavior, but think you won't notice as long as they made the unfounded, unproven, slanderous accusations first. Something's going to have to be done to defend the rights of conservative Christians in America to be treated equally and justly, or we will in fact end up where the Germans, who chose not to join the Nazi party did, they ended up marginalized or so I propose a means to fight back for me and my people. How about the new true? If you call me a Nazi without proof, and then don't recant, we have a legal group prepared to immediately file charges of slander for libel and make these leftists actually have to put the money where their mouth is and make a consequence out of their cowardice. One of the greatest historical human rights tragedies in history came at the hands of Nazis. 
Let's not cheapen that reality. Instead, let's leave the Nazi word where it belongs, connected to those who actually implemented their hate on a world stage so we never see it happen again. What do you think? Words have consequences, and they carry weight. Let's be very careful how we use our nomenclature, shall we? That way, if it ever comes up again, we will be ready for it, not numb to it because of its misuse by those who actually need to spend a lot of time alone in introspection and hopefully repentance. This is God's comic, Brad Stein. I know the truth hurts, but PC free is liberty. Hey, all my family, friends, and fans, it's God's Comic Brad Stein. Thank you for your support. Please keep it up every single month that comes by. If you just give that little five bucks, 10 bucks, 25 bucks, whatever you've committed to, we can keep doing this. I'm telling you, if you believe in my ministry, uh, you can help me make it happen. Folks, I will be out here doing the, the, the work, I promise you, but I do need your support. Thank you for being there. Don't give up on me. Share it with anybody else you might want to bring into the table that you think could be inspired by this. But let's do some damage for the kingdom while we're still here and God has still blessed us. It's still the greatest nation on earth. Let's see if we can keep it that way.